from Red Zone Weather in Bruton, Alabama, with meteorologist Spinks Meganson. A tropical weather update starts right now. Hurricane Ida set to become a powerful hurricane over the central Gulf of Mexico this weekend ahead of a landfall in the state of Louisiana, but the storm is going to bring impacts to much of the northern Gulf Coast as we get into Sunday and Monday. Good Friday evening to you. I'm meteorologist Sphinx Meganson tracking Hurricane Ida this evening that has currently moved over land in the western part of Cuba. The center of circulation is now north of the Isle of Youth there in the northwestern Caribbean Sea, and the center is actually onshore in Cuba right now. But it won't be over land for very long at all. In fact, we're expecting the center of Ida to emerge in the very warm waters of the southeastern Gulf of Mexico tonight before moving into the central Gulf on Saturday where rapid intensification is possible. The National Hurricane Center currently forecasting this system to become a category four hurricane with maximum sustained winds around 140 miles per hour ahead of just ahead of its landfall in Louisiana by the time we get into late Sunday or very early in the morning hours of Monday. We've got all the details for you on Ida on this Friday evening. Let me read off the latest from the Hurricane Center. The center of Ida is currently here uh, about 100 miles to the west of Havana, Cuba. Maximum sustained winds as of the latest 8 p.m. advisory at 80 miles per hour and min minimum central pressure is down to 985 millibars, which lets us know that this hurricane continues to strengthen. Let's go ahead and zoom into the storm as it stands now, and then I want to get in there and talk about what you can expect in South Alabama and Northwest Florida in terms of those impacts. Right now, the center of Ida, located over the western tip of Cuba, that's the Isle of Youth. This is the western part of Cuba. This is the Yucatan Peninsula back here. And so the center of Ida now over land, but not for long. This is a very narrow part of Cuba in through here, the western part. And that center of circulation is right under that area of deeper convection that continues to fire up right over the center. Those are called hot towers and that lets us know that intensification continues and most likely what's going to happen here there may be a brief period of weakening due to this land interaction over Cuba over the next say three to four hours but that is not going to last long because once the center of the storm emerges here into the southern Gulf to the west of Key West we could see potentially explosive strengthening with this storm because the water temperatures down in through here are very warm around 86 and 87 degrees. There's the wind plots on Ida right now. And so a fairly small system in terms of the overall tropical storm force winds. In fact, let's bring out the measuring tool if we can. That may or may not appear on the map, but nonetheless, uh, tropical storm force winds extend outward about 80 miles. And so what's going to happen, look at this, just how big the system uh, is going to get over the next two days, really. You're going from tropical storm force winds extending outward on the eastern side by 80 miles to a storm in through here just before landfall, likely in Louisiana with tropical storm force winds expected to be around 140 miles from the center of circulation. There's the tool that I was talking about. And again, tropical storm force winds extending outward about 90 miles with those hurricane force winds confined to the center of circulation. But this is going to be a much larger, much more powerful system once it reaches the northern Gulf. In fact, again, there's that probe tool with the official hurricane center guidance at uh, tropical storm force winds likely extending outward over 135 miles per hour with the core of the hurricane winds coming in to Louisiana. That's where you have a hurricane warning this evening for areas near metropolitan New Orleans, back down to Venice, back down to Grand Isle. All of these southern bayous of Louisiana involved in a hurricane warning. You've also got a hurricane watch that continues for the Mississippi coast and a tropical storm watch that continues for the Alabama coast. In other words, Mobile and Baldwin counties. Now there's your cone of uncertainty. Keep in mind though, impacts are going to extend well beyond Beyond that cone. This is a look at the rainfall expected with Ida and you can see even across our area in southeast Mississippi we're talking five, six, seven inches of rain in some cases 
with this very powerful hurricane in our local area. Down around New Orleans, upwards of 15 inches of rain. 15 inches of rain. That's a lot of rain, obviously, and that's going to lead to flash flooding in addition to the coastal inundation that happens down here uh, in the southeastern part of Louisiana from New Orleans points out. I tell you what, I'm very concerned this evening about the city of New Orleans. If you know someone in New Orleans uh, that may not be as weather aware as you are, please call them and let them know if they get an evacuation order, they've got to get out of New Orleans because much of the city obviously sits below sea level. That was made infamous by Hurricane Katrina back in 2005. And the path in terms of uh, this hurricane is somewhat reminiscent of Katrina once the system reaches the northern Gulf. And so this could be, unfortunately, a situation that has some aspects that are like Katrina, maybe even worse. This is forecast to be a stronger hurricane at landfall than Katrina was. You know, Hurricane Katrina came into Louisiana as a Cat 3. It weakened slightly at, before making landfall. It was a Category 5 storm down in the Gulf. What we're expecting here is that Ida will likely continue to increase in strength until the system makes landfall. That is not what you want to see. That's what happened in Hurricane Michael. If you remember back in 2018 when Michael made landfall in the Florida Panhandle, it was strengthening right up until the point of landfall. And again, don't just look at that cone of uncertainty. You're going to have impacts well away from the cone. This is going to be a large system growing larger even this evening. Again, outside that cone of uncertainty, heavy rain, isolated tornado is going to be a concern across our local area. Let's look at one model. This is the GFS and this model is doing a great job of highlighting the potential hazards with this hurricane. Here's your timestamp right up here. So watch your time in terms of the frame you're seeing. That look is valid at 10 o'clock tomorrow night. The core of Ida, the center of Ida, going to be in the central Gulf of Mexico to our south. And again, you could have winds as high as 130 miles per hour even tomorrow night when we're talking in the live video. By the time we get into Sunday morning, this storm could be a Category 4 storm, maybe even a Category 5 storm. That's not out of the question at this point. Making a run at a landfall in Louisiana, specifically southeast Louisiana, near and just south of New Orleans. This could be a historic storm that could do quite a bit of extensive damage across eastern Louisiana. I can't stress it enough. I am very concerned about the storm surge for New Orleans and areas to the south of there and even to the north of there on the north side of Lake Pontchartrain. That water is going to be streaming in here just like that. And when I say water, I'm not just talking about heavy rain and tornadoes. I'm talking also about coastal inundation and storm surge. And again, by 1 a.m. on Monday, this is the middle of the night, early Monday morning, Heavy rain, tornadoes possible across much of our area, particularly near the coast, the Alabama and the Northwest Florida coast. We're not really going to have much in the way of wind impacts here, as much as we're going to have heavy rain, flash flooding, maybe a few tornadoes, and of course, coastal hazards. That look is valid at one o'clock on Monday afternoon. We could have gusty winds around say 30 or 40 miles per hour across the western part of our area. But again, much of the eastern part of our area and northwest Florida not going to have a big wind event. This is going to be most likely a big rain event with a few embedded tornadoes for us. Again, to our west, it's a totally different ball game. I'm talking very extensive impacts across parts of Louisiana and Mississippi extending into Monday. By Tuesday, that that's, uh, look, I should say, is valid on Tuesday evening. Still could have rain and thunderstorms around from Ida. So again, the core wind impacts by Tuesday would obviously be over, but this is going to be a prolonged situation at Sunday, Monday, maybe even into early Tuesday. Again, by the time we get to uh, Sunday night, looking at a situation where Ida will likely be coming on shore here in Louisiana with impacts being possible, especially around the coastline locally in terms of heavy rain and maybe a few tornadoes. So let's get in there and talk about the impacts. Tornado risk, region wide, doesn't matter specifically where you are, we all will have a tornado risk on Sunday extending into Monday, maybe even Tuesday morning under certain uh, circumstances. So again, 
Tornado risk, gotta have a way to receive the warnings across our region. The Storm Prediction Center already getting on board, including much of Louisiana and Southern Mississippi in their level one risk. This will arguably go up over the next 24 hours. You'll probably see a level two risk introduced here at, for Sunday, valid into Monday. In addition to tornadoes, wind impacts possible mostly to our west. We do have a tropical storm watch that continues for all parts of Mobile and Baldwin counties. What does that mean? It means that tropical storm force wind gusts, in other words, winds in excess of 39 miles per hour, will be possible across Mobile and Baldwin counties, especially along the coast of Mobile Bay and the Alabama beaches. And so be aware of that tropical storm force winds for Mobile and Baldwin counties possible. Inland, right now, we do not have any type of watch or warning for the inland part of southwest Alabama or northwest Florida. No part of northwest Florida is involved in a tropical storm watch or warning. A hurricane watch and a tropical storm warning is in effect for coastal Mississippi. Of course, that includes Jackson and Harrison counties, Biloxi, Pascagoula, areas near Bay St. Louis involved in a hurricane watch and a tropical storm warning. What does that mean? It means that you could have hurricane force wind gusts in addition to sustained tropical storm force winds in these areas. A hurricane warning is in effect from the Pearl River, which serves as the Mississippi-Louisiana state line, all the way back over into Louisiana. New Orleans under a hurricane warning this evening. That means that hurricane conditions are likely in the warning area over the next 36 to 48 hours. So again, Metro New Orleans can't be stressed enough. Big deal coming with Hurricane Ida. Rain amounts locally, big gradient here. Seven inches of rain possible in parts of Mobile and Baldwin counties, but get this go about 100 miles inland into areas like Greenville and Georgiana, less than two inches of rain in some cases. So again, a big gradient here. The closer you get to the center of the storm, the higher the rain amounts. And check this out, upwards of 15 to 16 inches of rain for parts of Louisiana ahead from Ida. This is going to be, in addition to the surge risk and the wind risk, a big time flash flooding deal for eastern Louisiana. This area, unfortunately, seems like it is going to get battered by this major hurricane as it moves on shore. And again, just check out that swath. This would be Ida moving just like that. Most of the rain happening on the eastern side of this powerful hurricane. So there's your flash flooding analysis. Again, four to eight inches of rain possible across parts of Washington, Mobile, Baldwin, and Escambia County there in northwest Florida, the rest of the region two to six inches of rain. So flash flooding most likely to occur in the southwestern part of our local area. In addition to at the at tornado and wind risk, in addition to flash flooding, storm surge is also a concern. You have a storm surge watch for all parts of the coastal zones of Mobile and Baldwin County and a storm surge watch is in effect for coastal Mississippi. Back behind me, a storm surge warning is in effect for much of eastern Louisiana, including areas near Metro New Orleans. A storm surge of 7 to 11 feet possible with this hurricane. Now, in addition to Ida, we're also watching not one, not two, but three other areas of concern in the Atlantic. But here's a bit of good news. These two systems, one and two, not going to affect America at any point. This one's going to move north. This one's going to continue moving to the northeast out over the open waters of the Atlantic. However, there is a tropical wave that's set to emerge from Africa in a few days, a long way away from any part of North America, but a sign that we're getting close to the peak of hurricane season. Something else, in addition to Ida, to keep an eye on. The next names on the list, Julian, Kate, followed by, and, and I'll be honest, the, the L name has uh, left me. It's Larry, there you go. So, so Julian, Kate, Larry, and Mindy. It's been a long day around here, more long days ahead, and I apologize for that. So again, Julian, Kate, and Larry are the next names on the list. So again, we're tracking Hurricane Ida this evening, likely to bring heavy rain, tornadoes possible in our area in South Alabama and Northwest Florida by the time we get into 
Sunday evening extending into Monday. I will of course have ongoing updates in the Red Zone Weather app and if we have tornado warnings locally in our specific area, be sure to join me on Facebook Live Sunday evening into Monday. And of course that applies to the overnight hours as well. Many more updates coming about Hurricane Ida in the Red Zone Weather app likely to become a powerful Category 4 hurricane over the next few days as the system continues moving off to the Northwest. I do hope you have a wonderful Friday evening. Please let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. Many more updates coming in that Red Zone Weather app. Be sure to find us across social media and don't forget to download the free Red Zone Weather app and set up your customized alerts. Please support our Red Zone Weather sponsors who make our coverage possible every single day.